Hello and welcome. I'm Anna the Wolf and I'm so glad you've joined me today for this transformative tale. And in today's story, you've gone outside and are just sitting in the yard, enjoying the sun soaking into your skin and watching a little line of ants marching across the yard. And as it's going across, it kind of goes up and over the tip of your shoe and down and you follow it with your eyes over to an ant hill. And you decide, I'm just gonna see what they're up to over there. And so you just kind of lean over on your elbow and you're watching the ants march very industriously in and out of the ant hill. And each one of them is carrying a morsel. Some of them are bringing grains of sand out and building up the edges of the hill, and others of them are bringing food down into the ant hill. And it's really, really mesmerizing to watch them all. They all have their place, and they all seem to know exactly where they're going and what they're doing. And as you're watching, you can hear them talking amongst themselves. And you hear one of them stating, I... I don't know if I'm ready for that role yet. I just don't feel like, I don't feel like that's really where I'm meant to be. And another one of them replies, oh, pshaw, honey, you knew you would be queen one day. It's just been a matter of time. And now is your time to step into that role. And the other aunt with a lot of hesitation in her voice said, you know, I I don't feel like I'm ready. I don't, I don't feel like, like I'm ready to be queen. And the other aunt sounded very tired and said, you have to be, I can't be queen anymore. It's your turn. And then there was a quiet sigh and out of the top of the ant hill marched the most beautiful aunt. It was at least double the size of the, all the other ants that were marching back and forth. And she sat on the very edge of the hill and you could tell she was meant to be queen. She was somehow slightly more, more of everything than the other ants were. She was a little bit larger. She was a little bit shinier. She was charismatic. And as you watched her, you could tell that the weight of her role was weighing on her. And she, she kind of took it all in and looked around and watched all the ants going back and forth. And, and you could tell it was a role that she was meant to, to carry, but she just didn't seem like she was relishing the idea of it. But she had a crown on her head now. It had been passed off to her and it was her turn. And the ants asked her, what would you like us to do? What would you like us to do, queen? She said, well, you know, um, just keep doing what you're doing. I think you're doing a fine job. And as long as you keep doing what you're doing, we should be fine. And they said, really? well, okay, really? We'll, we'll keep doing what we're doing. And she went back down underground into her chamber. And you thought, Oh, that poor thing. She just didn't seem like she was ready to become queen. But there she was, queen of all the ants. And the next day you came out and you thought, I know what I'll do. I will make her job a little bit easier. And so you'd brought some sugar with you. And around the top of the entrance to the ant hill, you sprinkled a little bit of sugar so that she could just come up and there it would be for her. And she wouldn't even have to think about it. She could just grab it and have a good day. And maybe her life would be a little bit easier. And so sure enough, the ants started popping out of the ant hill one by one. And there was so much jubilation. The ants were ecstatic. They ran back down into the ant hill and they woke up the queen and they said, you'll never guess what's happened. It's like manna from heaven has fallen all around our ant hill. Come up and look, come up and look. And she came up and there were little crystals of sugar interspersed with all of 
the sand. And she said, we've done exactly what we were meant to do and we're being rewarded. Look at all of this abundance. Feast, everyone, feast. And so everyone grabbed some of the sugar and you thought, oh, I've done it. I've made her happy. And they all grabbed the sugar and ran back down underground. And you could hear them down there having an ant party. And there was laughing and clapping and you could hear their little feet dancing. And you thought, that's fantastic. And every day before you left, you stopped by the ant hill and you sprinkled a little bit of sugar out there as a tribute to the queen. And every day they marched up. And then you realized the queen wasn't coming up as often. You could hear her from below the surface and she was yelling, bring me more sugar. Bring it, bring it to me. And you thought, well, that doesn't sound like the queen that I remember. And as you sat and watched, the ant said, you have to come up, queen. There's, there's just not as much sugar up here as there was before. She said, that's because you greedy little buggers have been eating it all. All of you have been draining us of our sugar. And I'm down here being a queen. And you're up there doing I don't know what with the sugar. But it's all been disappearing. And you thought, that's odd. I sprinkled the same amount of sugar as I always did. One pinch. And what, what's happening to the sugar? So the next day, you put... A little bit more sugar to see and she did she came up and you saw her and she looked very very different she looked wan. she looked like she hadn't seen the light of day in quite some time and she had circles under her eyes and she looked unwell honestly she looked as though she had had a lot of late nights and been doing nothing but maybe worrying. She looked like someone who was very, very worried. And so she yelled at the ants. She came up and even though there was more sugar, she shall, she was shouting at them, bring more and put it in my chamber and go. Just get it and go. And the ants were, were going as fast as they could, gathering and stuffing and gathering and stuffing. And she marched back down into her chamber and there you could hear her yelling and screaming and there was no more shouting of joy and partying and there was no sound of dancing and jubilation. The ant queen was eating all of the sugar herself and some of the ants were so exhausted they were falling off to the wayside. They were famished. They, they didn't have enough sugar to even sustain themselves any longer. And then you heard a low rumble and you could see the sky was darkening and all of ants went running down into the ant hill and started screaming, rain, rain, there's a storm coming. And the queen said, get out there and get the rest of that sugar. Don't you dare leave it behind. I need more sugar. And so the already frail and tired and sick ants went up and grabbed as much sugar as they could before the drops started splattering. And it was like detonating bombs around them. And you could see them all grabbing the sugar and it was turning to liquid in their, in their mandibles as they were trying to run back underground with it. And the heavens opened up and rain poured down, and as many of the ants as could brought as much of the sugar as they could grab and took it underground. And you listened and understood that water was filling the chambers. And normally the ants could have just scampered out into surrounding chambers, but the queen had demanded so much sugar that it started turning into a liquid syrup and they were screaming and yelling that they were stuck and that they couldn't get loose. And you tried as you could. You grabbed a piece of straw and you stuffed it down the opening to the anthill. And a couple of the ants were able to somehow 
scamper up and out. But most of them were stuck in the sugar below. And the ant queen was yelling, more sugar, more sugar, as the entire chamber began to collapse. And only, only a few of the ants that said, no, absolutely no more sugar. And they headed towards the light of the opening and they clung and they grabbed and they clawed their way up and out towards the light and popped out of the surface. And they looked back down and all you could see was swirling syrup. And the ant queen in all of her beauty had become hideous. And you sat saddened by what had happened. You thought that making her life easier and dropping sugar would have helped her and made her happy, but there wasn't enough sugar to make her happy. And as you sat back on your knees, you watched as one of the ants stopped and looked at you and said, it'll be okay. Don't worry. She was never meant to be queen for more than a day. And she shook her back and a set of wings emerged. And she flew over the rise and landed. And behind her was marching a very small troop of ants. And there would be a new colony and a new day. And you knew you would never bring them sugar again. But you might leave them a piece of cheese. All right. I'm so glad you joined me for this tale today. And I hope that you have a really lovely day. And I'm thrilled that you joined me for another story. And I look forward to telling you the next one. But for now, I hope that you're your own ant queen and rule with beauty and abundance. Goodbye.